There are four major ways in which photons can interact with electrons and atoms found inside matter. So let's begin by discussing the first way which is described by the photoelectric effect. So basically, if the frequency of the photon is great enough, if its energy is greater than the work function of the electron, then a collision between the photon and the electron will send that electron out of the atom, while the photon will disappear, it will cease to exist. And this only takes place if the photon has a great enough frequency. So this is known as the photoelectric effect. Now the second method by which a photon interacts with electrons found inside atoms is given by the following description. So basically a photon can collide with an electron found inside that atom and that sends that electron to a higher energy state within that atom. So in such a collision the atom gains all the energy that the photon had and the photon ceases to exist as in the case of the photoelectric effect. So we'll discuss this in more detail when we discuss Bohr model or the Bohr's model of the atom. Now, let's move on to the third method that is described by the Compton effect, also known as Compton scattering. So, photon can scatter from an electron and in the process lose only some of its energy. So, the electron gains a certain quantity of kinetic energy and begins to move. The photon, however, does not disappear, it simply has less energy as before and the photon still moves at the speed of light. In fact, photons always move at the speed of light. So in such a method of interaction, after our collision takes place, the photon has a lower frequency, a lower energy, but it's moving with the same exact speed as before, given by the speed of light. And the final major method by which photons interact with matter is described by pair production. Now, in pair production, a photon essentially disappears and creates an electron and a positron. So, a positron has the same mass as an electron, but it has the opposite sign. It has a positive charge. Now, since a photon has no mass, we see that the pair production method of interaction is an example of creating matter, creating mass out of pure energy. And this is explained by the energy mass equivalence principle as discussed by Albert Einstein. So we'll discuss this in more detail in a future lecture but the energy is given by the following. So mass times the speed of light squared. So basically, when we have a stationary subatomic particle, it essentially has this quantity of energy. So let's look at the following example in which we're going to apply the pair production method as well as this equation. So what minimum energy should a photon have to undergo a pair production reaction? So basically, we're equating the minimum energy of a photon to the rest mass energy of the electron and the positron. The rest mass energy of a subatomic particle is given by this equation, E equals mc squared, where m is the mass of that particle and C is the speed of light. So, the minimum energy that a photon has to have to undergo the pair production reaction is equal to mc squared plus mc squared, where m is the mass of the electron and m is the mass of our positron. Notice they have the same exact mass, so these m's are equivalent and we can combine that to 2mc squared. So m is simply the mass of our electron. 9.11 times 10 to negative 31 kilograms. C is the speed of light 
3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, we square that multiply and we get about 1.64 times 10 to negative 13 joules of energy. So this represents the minimum energy that a photon can have to actually undergo the process of pair production. If the photon has an energy that is less than this amount, that basically means that photon cannot undergo this pair production process. Now, the inverse of the pair production process is known as annihilation. In the process of annihilation, a positron and our electron essentially collide, combine, disappear, and form the photon. So basically, we have mass being converted into energy. And in this case, in the pair production case, we have energy within a photon that is being transformed and converted into mass of our electron and the positron.